Hello and welcome to our lesson about substitution reactions. This is where one thing replaces another. When substitution reactions happen, pieces of a molecule are replaced by others. In this diagram, we can see that a hydrogen atom is replaced by a chlorine atom. This is very useful because alkanes are not very reactive, but this haloalkane is more reactive and we can use it to produce many other chemicals. Substitution starts with two molecules. The shapes here represent two molecules. What happens next is that they swap a piece. Two reactants make two products, just like in this diagram. Let's see how organic molecules do this. The chlorine atom swaps places with the hydrogen atom in ethane. The products of this reaction are chloroethane and hydrogen chloride. Saturated hydrocarbon molecules, like alkanes, do not react readily with halogens. Notice that UV light was written above the arrow in the reaction. This means that substitution of hydrogen atoms with halogens needs the energy from UV light for the reaction to occur. When ultraviolet light, or UV, is used, the chlorine atoms break apart. This makes it easier for them to replace one of the hydrogen atoms and make hydrogen chloride as one product. Once that happens, the remaining chlorine and carbon atoms bond. This makes the product chloroethane. Let's go to the lab to see some substitution reactions. It's good to be with you all again. Welcome back to the lab. Today we'll cook up some amazing organic molecules simply by mixing them. Amira mentioned that bromine reacts very quickly with unsaturated hydrocarbons, but not with saturated ones. We'll see that again in a moment when we revisit the test for unsaturated compounds. But this time, I'll be adding a twist. I want you to try and guess which type of reaction is taking place as we go along. Remember, this is the same bromine you saw reacting with ethane earlier. If we add a few drops of bromine dissolved in carbon tetrachloride to the cyclohexene, we expect to see that the red color of the bromine disappears very quickly. Remember that this shows us that the compound that we have is unsaturated. Since we know that this is cyclohexene, this should be the case. So let's add the drops of bromine solution and watch. Gosh, I'm always surprised at how quickly that goes. And now for the cyclohexane, which is saturated. As you can see, the solution does not change color. The bromine does not react with cyclohexane. Can you think of a way to react the cyclohexane with bromine? If you guessed that all we needed was a little time and UV light, you'd be correct. Look at this. I've had this test tube outside in bright sunshine to get some ultraviolet light, and the bromine has reacted. So let's summarize our findings. We saw that cyclohexene and bromine reacted very quickly, much faster than our other reaction, and without exposure to UV light. So this must have been another type of reaction, not substitution. We also saw that cyclohexane and bromine did not react at first, but then reacted in UV light. This must be substitution. Well, I'm sure you've realized that the quick reaction was addition. Since you already know about substitution, let's go back to the studio. Let's discuss Philip's reactions. When there was an unsaturated compound, the color disappeared quickly. A quick reaction means addition. The second reaction in today's lesson took a much longer time. It also needed the ultraviolet light from sunlight. A slow color change means that this compound is saturated. The UV light is needed for the reaction. Notice that we started with cyclohexane. The bromine uses UV light to split and start the reaction. Can you draw the correct substitution product and name it? One of the bromine atoms substitutes or replaces one of the hydrogen atoms on the molecule of cyclohexane. So we know that hydrogen can be replaced. What else can be replaced? We know how to make haloalkanes, 
So can the halogen be replaced? Yes, indeed, of course. The halogen atom is actually easier to replace. Now, let's take a look at how molecules like sodium hydroxide can do substitution of a halogen. When a base like sodium hydroxide reacts with chloroethane, the halogen is replaced with a hydroxide ion to make an alcohol. What are the products of this reaction? The hydroxide ion replaces the bromine on the molecule shown here. When the bromine swaps places with the hydroxide ion, the product is cyclohexanol and potassium bromide. Note that the same chemicals are used for both elimination and substitution. When we want to do substitution, colder temperatures and water are used. Can we go the other way? Again, the answer is yes. The hydroxyl or OH on an alcohol can be swapped for a halogen. For the reaction to go backwards, we need to add very concentrated hydrogen chloride or hydrogen bromide. This forms a tertiary alcohol. That means that a carbon atom is attached to three other carbon atoms. The reaction is much faster with a tertiary alcohol. When the reaction occurs with a secondary alcohol or with a primary alcohol, the reaction is much slower. Now for a reaction that you might remember, the one that makes esters. Esterification is also a substitution reaction. How do we know this? You might remember that esters are very useful as they are used to make the smells and flavors in food and sweets. The hydroxyl on the carboxylic acid changes place with the ethyl chain. When the hydroxyl combines with the hydrogen atom from the ethanol, water is made. Note that most reactions where water is involved use sulfuric acid as a catalyst. See if you can predict the products from this esterification reaction. Take a look. We've made ethyl butanoate. This is the smell of pineapple. Stop and see if you can find the parts that swapped partners. Hi everyone, welcome back to my lab. We're going to do some organic chemistry together using carboxylic acids. We're going to use ethanol and pentanoic acid to make something new. This is called a reflux apparatus. We heat the mixture in the bottom of the round bottom flask until it boils. The gases rise into the condenser where they become liquid again by condensation and fall back into the mixture. Refluxing allows us to keep the reaction hot and boiling without losing any of the liquids inside. So let's get going. First, we place some alcohol inside the flask. and some pentanoic acid. And finally, we add a few drops of sulfuric acid, being careful not to touch anything. This acts as a good catalyst for this reaction. Now, we heat up the mixture and let it boil and reflux for 10 minutes. Now, we must distill the mixture to separate the parts of the mixture. Thank you. 
the ethanol boils off easily at 78 degrees. The mixture will boil over here, past the thermometer and into the condenser, where it will turn into a liquid and collect here. We'll continue to heat the mixture. Can you see the alcohol boiling off on this side? As we start to collect the part which boils at around about 140 to 145 degrees, we start to see and smell a different product. Hmm, I wish I had smell vision This stuff smells great. It has a very sweet smell and reminds me a little of apples. This sweet smelling product from this reaction is called an ester. So let's get this straight. When a carboxylic acid like this reacts with an alcohol like this, we get an ester as a product. Thanks, Philip. Remember these experiments when you smell your favorite fruit smell. So you can see esters are made by substitution reactions. Try this question. Which acid and base form this ester? Propyl, pentanoate, and a water molecule. We can work out that the original molecules were propanol and pentanoic acid. Here's one more question on substitution. Identify the substances that are shown by the letters A and B in the diagram. Both of these reactions were substitution. Molecule A is potassium hydroxide and molecule B is ethyl propanoate. Until next time, check out the other videos as well as a task video later in this series or look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.